All right. So I just got an email from a student, and this student has taken red, green, blue, and luminance images of the Crab Nebula and wants to know how to combine those into a color image. So I recently also imaged the Crab Nebula. I didn't use the red, green, and blue filters. I used R, V, and B, but you can do the exact same thing as I'm about to show. And um, now in my case, I didn't take a single exposure in each frame. I took many exposures and I combined them in such a way that I got rid of all the bad pixels and image defects. And I got a deeper image. I averaged them all together. It's called stacking. And so you can see fainter structures. So my images are probably a little bit better than the images that you, uh, the student, are working with. But that's OK. You can combine them just the same. So let's take a look at my data here. This is my B image. It's a little bit noisy. You can see the noise in there. B is often the toughest filter to image it, B or blue, uh, particularly if the moon is up. It scatters blue light all over the place, brightening the sky, making it harder to image in your blue filters. Uh, this is the V. So that's my green filter. It's a little bit uh, deeper, a little bit higher signal to noise. You start to see some filamentary structure. And this is because uh, in supernova shocks, there's a lot of energy. You're exciting different elements, and, including oxygen. Um, oxygen-3, which is twice ionized oxygen, gets excited. And it emits an emission line in the green part of the spectrum. And so that shows up in your green filter or your V-band. And then you have your R filter. This is red light. And you really see the filamentary structure here. And that's due to hydrogen. Hydrogen is being excited and it emits the H alpha emission line in the red. Okay, so that's my blue, my green, my red. Here's my luminance. This is just broadband, red, green, and blue light all coming in together. People often take a luminance filter uh, because since you're taking a broader spectrum, you get more signal to noise. And you can use this when you combine your images, you can get the signal to noise of this image with the color from the others. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so step one is to select your blue, your green, your red. Uh, if you have a luminance, you can select it too. And we're gonna go up here to the triple dots and group them. Okay, we've now made a single FITS file with multiple layers. If you click on the top here, it's just averaging them all together. Actually, my luminance is turned off. I'll turn that on. You see the average changed a little bit. And so we have to now colorize and set blend modes, the different layers. Um, first, you want to make sure your luminance filter is on top. And there's a little bug in Afterglow right now. Go ahead and grab one of your filters and shift it around. Uh, it often, you have to move one first before you can actually see the true order. It's a little bug that we're fixing. So I, I just grabbed my R and moved it down, and I see that my luminance is indeed on top. And you'll need that. The order of the color layers doesn't matter, but the luminance layer has to be above the color layers. And if you don't have a luminance layer, you don't need one. You know, it's just if you have one, it must be on top. Okay, let's see here. Um, I'm going to color my V layer green. So I right clicked, right clicking on the red one, coloring it red, right clicking on the blue one, coloring it blue. So there we have a color image. Now I'm going to add in my luminance layer. Um, it's actually added in right now just as grayscale. If I turn it off, you can see that's the color combination. I'm going to turn it on. And you don't color it. You keep it gray. But you go to blend mode and change that to luminosity. So when you do that, you're taking the intensities from your luminance layer and the colors from everything beneath it. Now, sometimes it doesn't help 
particularly if you're imaging emission lines. And that's what you're, for the most part, imaging here is um, hydrogen and oxygen emission lines. So if I blink this on and off, there's off, there's on. It helps with the stars. Um, yeah, I think it's actually improving the signal to noise of the image. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Now this color combination is, it says manual here, but really it's percentile. That's the default. So down here, you have a background level, a saturation level. Mine's currently set to one and 99. So for each of these histograms, for each layer, it's going 1% of the way from the bottom, 1% of the way from the top, and that's setting the range from no red to all red, from no green to all green, no blue to all blue, and the range for the luminance layer as well. And it does an okay job. It's kind of a quick and dirty color combination. But uh, you could do better. And that's because we have all these stars in the image and there are astronomical catalogs and we know how bright these stars are. So we can use that information to set the proper levels between these layers. Okay, so let's do that next. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go to histogram fitting. And I'm gonna select photometric well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to turn off the luminance layer. Let's When we do this color combination, here I'm going to hit default so I can see something again. So I turned off the luminance layer and I hit default. And this is the red, the green, the blue layers before any calibration of the layers. Uh, the red layer is clearly dominating. The, the counts, if I were to check... Um, if I go to the red layer by itself and look down here at the number that's down here, we're looking at thousands. If I check the blue layer, it's about 1,000. So there are many more counts in the red layer. So the combination is red, and that's because we haven't calibrated. It just happens to be. Maybe I took a longer exposure in the red filter, and so I have more counts. It's meaningless until we calibrate it. Okay. Luminance is off, histogram fitting. We're gonna to go to photometric color calibration. And uh, make sure your blue layer's here, your green layer's here, your red layer's here. Uh, you'll have no numbers here initially until you press this button. Now what it's doing is it's extracting all the stars in each of your red, green, and blue frames and comparing it to the catalog values and then determining how much you need to shift each frame or multiply each frame to bring them into agreement with the catalogs. And that's what these numbers here are, the zero points. Okay. Reference layer doesn't really matter uh, for this particular exercise. In your white balance, you want that set to black body peaking in B. Uh, the human eye, you know, so a black body is a thermal spectrum. Thermal spectra that peak in the blue band, uh, the human eye sees as white. And so this is setting the definition of white. You can also correct for dust along the line of sight. If you know how much dust is between us and your target, you can remove that dust. Uh, and that's something that goes here. But let's not worry about that in this video. Lastly, neutralized background should be turned on. And um, we're gonna calibrate. So you see it shifted those histograms into agreement. The backgrounds have been neutralized, brought to the same level. And if I zoom out, the tails have been matched. And that's uh, from the, well, approximately matched. That's from the catalog calibration. What that does is it brings the tails into alignment. So our sources are calibrated, our background levels have been brought into agreement so we don't have a color across the background. And so this is the proper color combination. Now, we'll turn the luminance filter on. Well, let's, let's do that. Let's do that now. 
So here we have our color combination. You may, before we do that, you may want to hit default just to kind of readjust the scales. And you can tune the background and saturation levels if you want. But there we have our color calibration. Actually, I'm going to switch it from linear to midtone and then hit default. See, that does a nicer job. Um, the linear or logarithmic or any of these except for midtone lets you see more detail at the faint end, but it saturates the bright end. If you go to midtone, then you can have detail at the faint end, all the structure here in the faintness of the nebula, and at the bright end. So none of the stars become saturated blobs. That's a nice option. And you can adjust it really just by changing this one. I can bring this up or down, and that will adjust the levels. I need to do it more than that. Let's try 2000. You see that tuned it down. Maybe I'll do 5000. See, it's making it fainter. If you go the other way, there's 2000, 1000. You can play with it. I just put it back into default there. Okay, so that's a red, green, blue combination. Mostly red. Uh, it's mostly that hydrogen. I see little hints of green in the outskirts. That's the oxygen. The white in the middle is because in here we have uh, a neutron star, a pulsar spinning with magnetic fields. And electrons caught up in those magnetic fields are emitting a continuum of light with similar amounts of red, green, and blue. And so that combines to a whitish color. Now your luminance filter, we can turn it on, but it's just gonna mess things up until we um, set its level. So for that, uh, we're gonna go to neutralize sources. The reference can be any of the ones you just did. Let's do the R band, because you had the most signal in the R band. And so we're gonna take our luminance filter and we're gonna match it to the R band. You can't catalog calibrate a luminance filter. There's no catalog for luminance. So we're just gonna kind of match the luminance values to the R band values. So I neutralize there, hit the default. You can see uh, it's histogram, kind of the whitish one. It's matched to the red. Again, you can turn it on and off and see if you like it better. I do like it better. We are getting some more signal to noise. Okay. And then again, you can adjust the midtone level to adjust your image as you want. When you're done, you can frame it up, save the part you want here, or if you want to just save the full image in full resolution, uh, you press this here. Okay, that's it.